Hey, this is Jackson with Big Sky Mountain Products, and today I'm going to show you how to trim your Rover and Endurance Climbing skins to make them as clean and functional as possible. The first step is to gather your necessary tools and equipment, one set of trim instructions, four rivets, one nail, two tip clips, and optionally one trim blade. Some highly recommended tools that I like to use from home when assembling my skins. A marker, a ruler or a flat edge, a cutting board or any surface that you don't mind cutting into, a hammer if you plan on using rivets to assemble your tip, scissors, and tape. Preferably, you'll have a pair of vices that you can use to elevate your ski off of your surface while you're cutting your skins. If you don't have vices, anything that will prop your ski up works. From here, you'll want to decide on the adjustment of your tail clip. There are a few things to consider here. First, whether or not you'll be using your skins for multiple pairs of skis. If you are, you'll want to adjust the tail clip such that the skins will be able to fit both pairs. Beyond that, I personally like to extend my tail clip out so that you have more tail strap material and less skin material on the tail of the ski. This will make the skins lighter, more packable, and faster. After you've decided on your tail clip adjustment, clip your tail to the tail of your ski and run the skin over the length of your ski so the top of the skin is hanging over the tip of the ski. Take your marker and mark approximately 12 inches down from the tip of your ski onto the paper or the edge of the skin. Next, you'll want to cut your template out from the rest of your directions. This is where you'll decide whether you want to use rivets to assemble your tip or if you'll just want to use the strength of the glue to stick your fold over on itself glue to glue. It's optional and both options work great. However, if you have the time to use the rivets, your skins will be slightly lighter, slightly more packable, and you'll have more glue to base contact, which prevents any snow from getting between the base of your ski and your skin. Now I'm gonna show you all how to use the rivets. So I'm gonna cut my template here at the rivet line. Now we're gonna trace your tip template onto the skin. Take note of your fold line. You want to place the fold line approximately one inch below the tip of your ski and center the template onto the skin. Now I'll mark the fold line and trace the template onto the skin. It's easiest if you run your marker with the grain of the skin rather than against it. It might be helpful for you to draw a line across the skin at your fold line, which is at the apex of these two corners. Here's where you'll make your first cut into your skin. This is your first time trimming skins. It can be a little scary, but don't worry. It absolutely does not need to be perfect and you can make mistakes without noticing any functional differences. Cut slowly and carefully along your marked template. Don't forget to change angles at your fold over line. You can feel free to just cut off all the excess material. Take one tip clip and then peel your release paper back to just below your fold line. You can crease it back onto itself to keep it out of your way. Take your tip and slide it over the tip of your skin with the flat part against the glue and the front of the notch facing the top of your skin. Now fold the tip over around your tip clip and stick it back onto itself glue to glue. If you're not using rivets to hold your tip together, you're now done with the tip assembly. If you're using rivets to hold together your tip assembly, you want to make two marks, each about one third in from the side of the foldover. From here, you'll use your nail and your hammer to make your rivet holds. This step can be a bit awkward, but you just want to make sure that you're not putting any holes in any important surfaces under your skin. I like to use the handle of the cutting board, which is an empty space that I can poke my nail through without making contact with the table. You'll want to take a male rivet and stick it through one of the holes. You then take a female side of the rivet and pop it on to the male side. They should stick together on their own. Once your rivets are stuck together, you'll again take your hammer and your cutting board or any hard surface, it can't even be the concrete floor of your garage, and hammer those rivets together. Congratulations, you've assembled your skins for length. Now it's time to trim them for width. Start by attaching your tip clip to the tip of your ski. You can then pull back your release paper as you stretch the skin over the length of your ski. 
you may have to pull the skin back off the ski to get it as centered on the ski as possible. Once you're satisfied that your skin is centered on the ski, you'll want to make any micro tail clip adjustments to make sure that it cams on your ski nice and easily. If your tail strap is too tight, it'll pull your skin away from the natural camber of your ski. Now we'll begin trimming our skins for width. Take your blade and run it along one edge of the ski, cutting away any excess skin material. It's helpful to cut with the grain of your skin to make as clean of a cut as possible. Go back and clean up any spots where your blade may have deviated away from the edge of the ski. Once your edge is nice and clean, you'll want to cut your opposing edge using the same method. Your skins should now be trimmed wall to wall throughout the majority of your ski. However, you'll want your edges exposed so that you can grip ice while skinning uphill. Remove the skin from the ski. Now, lay the skin back down so that just one edge is exposed and all of your base material is covered by the skin. You'll now trim the side of the skin opposing the edge that you just exposed. There should be just about an eighth of inch of skin material hanging over this edge. Now you'll remove the skin from the ski one last time and trim for your other edge. Now you'll lay the skin back on the ski with the edge that you just trimmed exposed plus about one eighth of an inch of base material exposed or one edge's width of base material exposed. Finally, trim your second edge for the final time. When trimming for the edge, it can be helpful to pull the narrow thread away from the skin while you trim. Pull the skin back from the base of the ski and then lay it back down centered so that both edges are exposed. From here, your skin should be ready to use. However, some people, myself included, like to taper the tips and the tails even further in order to cut down on weight and bulk. When you're skinning, most of your grip comes from underfoot to about six inches behind the heel of your foot. This means that major the majority of your skin material is really excess. Now I'll show you how to taper your skins just in case you'd like to do so. Again, this is not necessary, but myself as well as a lot of other people like to taper their skins in order to make them as light and packable as possible. First, you'll take your skin and you'll fold it together glue to glue, with the exception of the tip of your skin where you'll do your tapering. Take a scrap of your release paper and lay it over your glue in order to keep it from being contaminated. You can do this step with scissors, but again, I prefer to use a cutting board. Take a straight edge and mark your taper on the skin so that you have a straight, flat line to follow. The cleaner the line, the less friction there will be between your skin and the snow. Since I'm using a blade, I'm simply gonna hold my straight edge onto the skin and run the blade against the edge to create my taper. Now you'll follow these exact same steps to taper the tail of your skin. As you're tapering the tail of your skin, be sure not to cut into the bottom of your tail strap. Once you've tapered the skin, you can apply it to your ski one last time to see how you've done and if you like your taper. If you'd like, you can add more taper to the tip but I'd be careful adding too much taper to the tail as that is where the majority of your grip comes from while skinning. Congratulations, now your skins are good to go. Get out there and enjoy some skiing. Way to go. You did it.